Hi, I'm Matt. In this episode, you're going to be flashing iNav onto your flight controller board. Now, the good news for you, this is really straightforward. So with that said, as you can see up on your screen right now, is that we've got the flight control board and I've been to plug the USB lead in there so you can see that just dancing around. Now, the only tool which you need for this entire process, well, physical, besides a USB lead and your flight controller, uh, is a pen. Now, that may sound a little bit daft, but let's take a quick look at the flight control board. And the reason why we need a pen is because you'll see just down here is that we've got a little bronze tab, okay? And what we wanna do is, let me turn this around the right way round, is what we wanna do is take the biro and then push it down and then we're gonna listen for a click. Can you hear that clicky noise? Is that that's what we need to do to be able to put the flight controller into bootloader mode. We also need one piece of software as well. Now, in a previous part of this series, I discussed about the uh, Impulse RC driver fixer. Now, if you don't have that to hand, uh, if you go to, oh, I'll put a link in the video description for you, and then click on Impulse Driver Fixer, and then it will download. So I've got mine there ready for in a moment, and also you will need iNav as well. So before we go any further, unfortunately, what I've been and seen in the Facebook group is that a number of people have been a little bit um, manhandling the boards. Now, uh, let me just make the point on here, okay? The, the little USB connector, which we're plugging our, flight, or the, our USB connector in, our USB lead in, is not very tough. So when you plug your USB lead in, okay, and you'll see me, I was really gently unplugging it then, is maybe support it just with your finger now and then push it in very gently. And the reason for that is that those USB connectors, they're not very tough. So do go steady with your USB connector, okay? And the last thing which I wanna see is an another video going, oh, I snapped my um, USB connector off because there's no getting one of those uh, connectors back on again afterwards. So do go careful with the USB lead. Don't, don't just ram it in there. Gingerly just wet, um, just nudge it in so it fits in there. Now I've got a USB lead, uh, which I've connected mine in. It's a little micro USB A lead, I think is the right one. Uh, I'm sure you've got a million of them flying floating around on your desk. Now, with that said, that's like the hard part. Let's go to the easy part. Now, you will need iNav running up on your desktop. Again, if you don't have iNav, there's a link to that, to the iNav configurator. That's uh, in the video description for you, so I am assuming that you've already got that downloaded. So the next part is, is that we need to load iNav, the firmware, so the program which runs on the board, on, we need to load it on there because it's most likely been in come with you with beta flight and if you connect it up and press connect it will go, go to the CLI, mo CLI mode uh, and you won't be able to change anything. So we need to go and load iNav onto the board. Now the good news is that this is very straightforward to do. Just follow these steps and you really can go wrong. So on the left hand side click on firmware flasher. Now if you have a V1 board okay, is that you'll want to drop this down and then choose Omnibus F4. If you have a pro board, which is the V2, which we, we've got up here in front of us right now, is that in my instance, I'm gonna go and choose, go down one more option and choose Omnibus F4 Pro. Okay, so if you're on V1, you go for the Omnibus F4. If you've got the V2 board, then you go for the F4 Pro. Now, the crucial set in here, which you need to be aware of, is do not tick or check full chip arrays. And the reason if you choose full chip arrays is that it won't flash. I've had that issue with all the ominous bo omn omnibus boards which I've had, uh, and it's all been down to the full chip arrays. So don't make it like that. Make sure that's turned off. And then from the drop down list, now at the time we're recording, the latest version is 1.7.1. .1. Obviously, if there's a newer version, choose that version. So I'm choosing the latest version, which is 1.7.1. Happy days. The next step is, is that we now need to download the software, which is, sounds really complicated, but down here in the bottom right-hand corner, we're gonna click Load Firmware Online. 
That was hard, wasn't it? We know it's been loaded because the screen just dropped down. So we're now going to scroll down and get the scroll bar. There we go. We're going to right down to the bottom. And what we're going to be focusing upon is this bottom bar. Okay, so that is the software ready to go. What we now need to do is click on that button, plug our USB lead in, uh, and then click, well, hopefully it's going to automatically flash for us. So with that said, I'm going to grab the pen uh, and I'll make sure I can get this on the camera for you. So what I'm going to do with the biro, I'm just going to push that down and wait for it to hear it to click. There we go. It's clicked. Find the other end of the USB lead. Get it the right way around. And this bit is always a fiddle. So if you can get someone else to give you a hand, this is like the tricky part is jam that in the USB socket. There we go. And then the board is in DFU mode. Now, the thing is, is that if this is the first time you've ever connected one of these boards to your computer, you're gonna need to change the drivers for it. Now, the best tool which I found is the Impulse RC driver fixer. So I've just, I've already been and downloaded mine. It's popped up, it's searching for a flight controller, installing the DFU driver, wait for it. We just wait, success, success. driver's been fixed, happy days. You might get this notice on here. We're gonna try it anyway uh, about Chrome running while it was being fixed. We're gonna try it anyway. If you do run into an issue with Flash in the firmware is um, close Chrome down and that includes iNav and then reopen Chrome, reopen iNav and then try it again. So let's bring this across, let's open this up and I'm gonna click on Flash firmware at the bottom, happy days, there we go. So it's erasing the previous version of whatever firmware was on there, and we can now see it's flashing at the bottom. While it's doing that, do keep in the back of your mind, do go very, very careful with that USB socket. It's not very strong. It's only soldered very lightly to a very thin board, okay? Uh, and if you get stuck at any point in time here, just hit rewind on this video uh, and uh, just go through the steps again. Unfortunately, I don't need, don't know what software you need uh, if you're running a Mac. Uh, if you do run into an issue on that one, unfortunately, I cannot help you. I'm afraid uh, I'm only using Windows. But with that aside, the software has now been and flashed. How do we know that? Is that if we click on connect at the top right hand corner, connect, Happy days, there is our board working. Let me just move the board around. There we go, and we can see now see it working on the screen. Uh, and that's it, that's iNav loaded. I am gonna quickly recap the steps for you. Let's do that again. Let's grab our flight controller, put it on the camera. The, before, we don't try uh, flashing and trying to push this little tiny USB lead in, instead, Connect your USB lead up beforehand, okay? Get a pen, poke down on that little brass switch and you will hear it click. There we go. Then you plug it into your computer. Choose the right board. So like I said, with a V1 board, you choose Omnibus F4. If you're using a V2 board, choose an Omnibus F4 Pro. Uh, and download the software. So we, I'll quick just go through the steps again. Firmware flasher, choose your right board. So I was using Omnibus F4 Pro. There we go, choose the latest version of the software. Remember, full chip arrays, do not tick that option. Just leave the top two connect uh, set like above. Load the firmware, scroll to the bottom. Wait for that to come up again. There we go, down to the bottom. Then push down the button, connect it to your PC. Run that Impulse RC Convert tool, which will get the right drivers on there. If then once it's been found the actual device, click on flash firmware. Hopefully it then says erasing, uh, erasing and then loading the firmware onto the device. If you run into any issues, a couple of daft pointers for you. Number one, change your USB lead, okay? I've seen other people, I've had exactly the same issue here as well. Change the USB lead out for a different one. Rule out the obvious. Second one, make sure you really have clicked down with, and that's why I'm suggesting using a biro, make sure you really have clicked down on that button and you will hear it click and it just shorts out the contact and then puts the board into bootloader mode. If you're struggling trying to push down that and get the USB lead in at the same time, ask someone else to give you a hand. And besides that, 
that should be it, pretty straightforward. So the driver fixer is the best one to do, uh, the, that tool which we saw to get the right uh, driver onto your system. There is another tool called Zagid, I'll put a link to that in the video description for you, just in case you do run into some issues. But with that said, the only other thing which you could run into is that you might need to restart Chrome. So close down Chrome, crucially close, close down iNav as well. Remember iNav is actually a Chrome based app too. Close that down, restart everything and then try again. And for my last final words is go careful with that USB little port is because it's not very strong at all. And that, believe it or not, is iNav now flashed onto our little flight control board and what do we need to do from here great news to be honest absolutely fantastic news all we need to do is jam our servos and ESC and receiver into the right places connect up our GPS uh, unit and tweak a couple of settings in the interface and we're ready for the install so with that said go and put the kettle on and I'll see you in the next episode from myself Matt see you soon cheerios